Ice cream conversation. Ice cream conversation. Forever on the grind all day, every day. Ice cream combos, always real, they never play. Download the podcast, listen on any day. Why didn't I do this sooner? Only thing you ever say. Xavier, best host of all time. All of the faithful listeners will say they never lie. Check every story, they run like me with the rhymes. When other shows report anything, it should be a crime. Entertainment news, yeah, I gotta get mine from ICC, and you should be inclined to do the same if you got half a mind. I do co-sign this lady to shine like Frankenstein, cut it today, design, icecreamcombos.com. Tune in, tune in, yeah, it's influence, influence by icecreamcombos.com. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the Ice Cream Convos podcast, where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. I am your host, Xaviera. And yes, I'm a little tardy for the party today, but please excuse me, because if you saw the way my twist out looked this morning when I got up out of bed, you would understand why I had to reprioritize my day and fix my hair first. So I am here and I'm excited and I'm glad to be back podcasting. I took a little bit off because I traveled to Chicago with NBC for their annual One Chicago day and I had a freaking blast. It is so much fun. I had the opportunity to interview all of the cast members, writers, uh, producers, you know, technical advisors of Chicago PD, Chicago Med, and Chicago Fire. I literally had a blast and I stayed at the Langham Hotel. Y'all, let me tell you something about the Langham Hotel. The Langham Hotel is so fire. It's a five-star hotel and it is so fire. It just makes you want to walk around the room, just butt monkey naked and dance in the mirror to all your favorite songs and sing, Mama, I Made It, Mama, I Made It. Now, I'm not saying that's what I did. I'm just saying that's what I felt like doing. Hopefully, nobody got video of me dancing in the mirror. But anyway, such a great time. Special thanks to NBC. And let me just remind all of you, the Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, and Chicago Med three-hour crossover event goes down tonight on NBC. And you definitely want to tune in because they never disappoint with their crossover events. And this one is going to be so fire. They are dealing with a flesh, what is it, a flesh-eating bacteria Anytime something is eating flesh, bruh, it's going to be a serious situation. So you definitely want to tune in, check that out. And then we can reconvene and talk about it later because I know it is going to be so good. Okay, so today's podcast is dedicated to all of the people who call you at work and say, what you doing? Um, I'm at work. Now, just to be fair, just because we are at work does not technically mean that we are working. I get that. But don't call me at work and say, what you doing? I'm at work. And then nine times out of 10, when they call, they don't even want nothing. They just want somebody to talk to because they ain't at work. Boo-boo, you go to work too. And then I can call you and say, what you doing? I'm at work. What you doing? I'm at work. So shout out to everyone who likes to call people at work to ask, what you doing? So today's podcast, we are going to cover some Kiki Wyatt news. We have plenty of baby news, but Kiki Wyatt. um, I want to talk about y'all problematic cousin, Gina Rodriguez. Um, I want to know why y'all give Lala Anthony such a hard time. We'll talk about Centoya Brown. She is now doing interviews since her release from prison. We're going to talk some movies and then we have to get into some serious topics like Junior and Tatiana Jefferson. So let's go ahead and get this show popping. Y'all ready? Yes. Yes, we are ready. Let's go, Zabi. I mean, listen, it never hurts just to have some random applause in the middle of your podcast. It just feels like a crowd that's just cheering you on to do your very best. Okay, well, we might as well kick off the podcast with the tomfoolery and shenanigans. I'm going to need all my Latina brothers and sisters to come along and get y'all problematic cousin Gina Rodriguez. Gina Rodriguez is the epitome of, girl, you can't be that stupid. But I think she is. Gina Rodriguez was trending on social media from sunrise to sunset on Tuesday after she posted a video of herself singing along to the Fuji's classic, Ready or Not, Here I Come, You Can't Hide. I'm gonna find you and take 
eat, slow, lean. Y'all know we, we act up when that come on because that's a classic, classic tune. So I wasn't mad at her for singing along to the classic jammy jams. But of all parts of the song for you to post yourself singing on social media, she posted herself getting all glammed up because, you know, she stars on Jane the Virgin. She gets all glammed up in the chair. You know, they're doing her hair, makeup, whatever, whatever. And she posts video of herself rapping along to um, I could do what you do easy. Front and inwards give me heebie jeebies. But she didn't censor herself. And thus, now she is getting dragged to and fro through the streets of social media. So let me just play the little clippy clip of Gina singing along with the Fugees. Just to give you some context. Voodoo. I could do what you do. Believe me. Niggas give me heebie jeebies. <laughs> Okay, so not only did she drop the N word, but she hit a <laughs> at the end because she knew she thought it was funny. She was violating. She probably knew, you know how they say, and that's the moment that Gina Rodriguez knew she had fucked up. That's probably what she felt in her spirit. You know, the little nervous <laughs> at the end. I don't know because I can't rationalize stupid. I try sometimes to dig in the stupid bag, but it's really, really hard for me to reach my hand all the way down in the bottom of the stupid bag. But Gina girl, what is going on? So she gets dragged on social media and she decides to issue an apology. She issued an apology for people being offended, not for the offense. Check out this apology. Hey, what's up, everybody? I just wanted to reach out and apologize. I am sorry. I am sorry if I offended anyone by singing along to the Fugees, to a song I love that I grew up on. I love Lauryn Hill. And um, I really am sorry if I offended you. So she apologized for singing along to the Fugees as if singing along to the Fugees is a violation. No, that's not a violation. You using the N word is what offended people and people felt like you violated. Now, I want to talk about that a little bit in a minute, too. But let me just finish with your cousin, Gina Rodriguez. So she issues this apology. Boo, the apology fell on deaf ears. Nobody was still trying to hear it. Nobody was still buying it. So then she turned off all of the comments on her social media accounts. Well, basically Instagram, because I think that's the only one you can turn the comments off on. But she tried to turn off the comments to save herself. And then she issued this last apology and a last ditch effort to save face. She put... In song or in real life, the words that I spoke should not have been spoken. I grew up loving the Fugees and Lauryn Hill. Well, who didn't? I thoughtlessly sang along to the lyrics of a favorite song. And even worse, I posted it. You damn sure did, sis. The word I sang carries with it a legacy of hurt and pain that I cannot even imagine. Whatever consequences I face for my actions today, none will be more hurtful than the personal remorse I feel. Watching my own video playing back at me has shaken me to my core. It is humiliating that this has to be a public lesson that is indeed a much deserved lesson. I feel so deeply protective and responsible to the community of color, but I have let this community down. I have some serious learning and growing to do, and I am so deeply sorry for the pain I have caused. Sis, let me tell you why I'm not buying this apology. Because Number one, you are a habitual line stepper. This is not the first time you crossed the line and jumped out the window and said something crazy and then tried to cry your way out or apologize your way out. And you are an actress. You are trained and paid to emote different emotions as needed. Right now, you need remorse. Right now, you need emotion. And that's what you're trying to give us in these apologies. You li Let me run this back. Voodoo. I could do what you do. Believe me. Niggas give me heebie jeebies. <laughs> the <laughs> at the end is not remorse. This sis says she is shaken to her core. Girl, you better off trying to shake the table than try to act like you shaken to the core. Girl, Gina, miss me with this. Like literally miss me with it. You said it, you you said it with your chest because you felt it. That ain't the first time you sang the lyric. That ain't the first time you said the word. You said it with full comfortability. I just, I don't know how I just tried to say that, but I said it. And you felt so comfortable in saying that word. You felt so comfortable in singing those lyrics. Don't try to cry for me, Argentina now. Cause I don't have no tears left for you. Gina, girl, you can't think we that stupid. Now I know you that stupid, but you can't think we are this stupid, Gina. Like literally miss me with all of it. Now, here's my confusion. 
How is it that some people in the Latin community are allowed to say the N-word, but then other ones aren't? Because if I had just saw this video of Gina singing along to the, you know, singing along to Ready or Not and singing that verse, I would have looked at it and been like, ooh, they about to get her. But I wouldn't have been like, oh my, what? No, she, oh, no, she didn't say, you say, oh no. Cardi used in word all day long. Fat Joe used in word all day long. Noriega used in word all day long. They are our Latina brothers and sisters. So why is it okay for some people to use in word? And not for others. Is it just because who we pick and choose or who we think is black enough or deeply rooted in the culture enough to use it? I don't know. My whole life growing up, I was around Puerto Ricans who used the N-word. So I, I don't know. But I'm just saying. So I need someone to give me some clarity on who gets the N-word pass and who doesn't get the N-word pass. Now, I know in this day and age, Gina Rodriguez don't get a pass on nothing. She could say Farfanugan and we could be like, oh, cancel her ass. We done. We done. Did she say, did you hear her ass say Farfanugan? Oh, she got to go. She has got to go. And, you know, I can't even jump out the window and try to protect her because I saw Miss Bala. And I was disappointed in that film. And I thought it was going to be good. So you don't have an ally in me, Gina. Plus, you are a habitual line stepper. Remember the time she said her father is a dark Afro-Latina? And then we pulled the picture. <laughs> and he looked like uh, Alex Trebek. Girls, just stop. Just stop. Gina, just delete your socials. Do your acting. Just just stick to the actings. Just learn your script. Stick to the script. Hey. There it is. Stick to the script. Don't go off script because apparently you just don't do a good job when you go off script. And, that, and that's all I'm going to say about y'all problematic cousin Gina Rodriguez. But yes, she is getting dragged through the streets of social media. Ain't nobody trying to hear it. But I do need clarity on who is allowed to say the N word and who isn't in the Latin community because y'all give y'all never say nothing to Cardi. Y'all never say nothing to Fat Joe. Y'all ain't never say nothing to Big Pun. Y'all it's certain people. That y'all just okay with it. So if we're going to be mad or if we're going to set boundaries, the boundaries have to be across the board because that's where confusion come in. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That, that, I mean, I'm not asking for much, but let me go ahead and segue into another Latina sister that y'all be giving a hard time. Why do y'all give Lala Anthony such a hard time? Now, I will say my only complaint with Lala is the fact that she transformed into a Kardashian right before my eyes. I said, Lord, when, when did it happen? I remember Lala, the old Lala in the back, back days. The old Lala who used to do radio in Atlanta. The Lala who used to be like, mm, when the last time she washed her hair? But now we got the new and improved Lala. We got the, I got some shmoney married to an NBA player who liked to take vacations with other chicks Lala. We got the Lala who is now an actress. And y'all, on power. Lala's character Keisha saw her demise and y'all celebrated. And y'all this is how y'all sounded when when Tasha murked out Keisha on power. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna miss everybody. I'm gonna miss everybody. Miss my uncle Charles, yeah. This song is dedicated to my homies in that gangster lean y'all were so happy when Keisha got murked out on power I was like I just never I felt uncomfortable celebrating someone being murdered especially another mother but y'all gave Lala the hardest time y'all continue to give her the hardest time about being an actress and now mind you I mean keeping it you know trill and 100 Lala is not at the top of my totem pole of actresses okay Lala got a, a, a many more acting classes to go but I'm not mad at her she has to start somewhere. Everybody has to start somewhere. Listen, Halle Berry was a crackhead. And I know I used this example before, but she was a very, very good crackhead. Okay. But just give Lala a chance. Y'all drag Lala so bad over her acting skills. And now it's getting to the point where at one point in time, it was kind of funny, but now I'm starting to feel bad for Lala. But Despite what you think about her acting, she out here getting it. She getting ready to be on the shy. She got some other stuff lined up. So Lala recently stopped by the Breakfast Club and Charlamagne asked her, how do you feel or how does it make you feel when people say that you can't act? And this is what Lala had to say. Take a listen, ICC friends. Do you get upset when people say you can't act? Um... Not really. I think, you know, you got to be worried when people aren't talking. My thing is that 
I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So if I couldn't do it, then why am I doing it? If you could do it better, then why are you not getting the jobs I'm getting? Exactly. That's how I look at it. And my thing is, I do it. I put my all into it. I didn't start that way. So it's been a different journey for me, but that doesn't mean I can't do it. And I think people just naturally want to hate because you started differently. Oh, you're not a real actor. You started on the radio. You're this, you're that. Like, all right, maybe I didn't come into it like you, but I put the work in and I continue to put the work in. So that doesn't bother me. I'm doing shows with Courtney Kemp, one of the top showrunners in Hollywood. Now I'm on a show with Lena Waithe, who's won major awards and and doing amazing work. Like, Mm -hmm. these people are not just giving me jobs because I'm me. They can hire anyone. Mm -hmm. They're giving me jobs because I go in there and I put the work in and I do what I'm supposed to. Nobody wants to see their show fail, so I'm sure they're not going to just give anyone a job. Of course not. And I also bring a following with me. I've got 10 million followers on Instagram. Like, people watch what I do, and what's the point of having these great shows if nobody's watching them? You want people to watch, so... If you could do it better, you bring your 10 million followers Uh-oh. and come do what I do. <laughs> now, look, I'm trying to advocate for Lala, but for someone who says they're unbothered, that explanation sounded very bothered. But I get it. Imagine giving your all and trying to do your best and people are just telling you, girl, you trash. Like, do something else. Can you be a booty model or something? Like, no, nah, maybe acting ain't your thing. But something that she said in that explanation stood out to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. She said, I bring a following. I got 10 million followers. Sis. A following never worked in an acting class. A following never made someone a better actor. So, you know, sometimes maybe that wasn't necessarily the best explanation that you could have brought to the table. But I get what you're trying to say because, you know, nowadays these movie companies are just hiring people off of social media to be in these films because they want the following. And then they end up with a trash ass social media star and hope that their audience will watch this movie because they got a good following. But just... Keep working, Lala. Keep putting in the work. Stay focused. You do sound very bothered to be unbothered by it, but just keep working. I'm not here to snatch a script out of your hand or to tell you to go do something else. If this is your dream, keep working at it. Keep getting better at it, I suppose. And um, focus more on the lines versus your followers. And you'll get it. You'll get it. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does on The Shy. So, and then did anybody ever take into consideration that just maybe she has some trash lines on power? Because I told y'all how I feel about power. (laughs) But anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. But let me know what you think. Do you think Lala is a bad actor or do you think she has room for improvement because see we're gonna we're gonna put a positive spin on this do, do you think lala has room for improvement as an actress versus just saying she's a flat out terrible actress give her a chance okay we all need a chance listen the first day at mcdonald's they don't put you on the fries you got to work your way to them fries like calvin did okay so give lala a chance y'all just be nice be nice Okay, so in other news, Centoya Brown, excuse me, (coughs) Centoya Brown Long. Centoya Brown is out of jail. Her new book hit shelves on yesterday, Free Centoya, and she started doing press in order to promote this book. And it is her first time speaking out since her post-prison, you know, release and post-prison interviews and so on and so forth. And during a conversation with the Today Show, The interviewer asked Centoya if she could say anything to Johnny Allen's family. And Johnny Allen is the man that she killed, the one who paid to have sex with her when she was a minor. If she could say anything to his family, what would it be? And listen to what Centoya had to say. If if the family and friends of of Johnny Allen, the man that you shot and killed, if they're watching this morning, Mm -hmm. what would you say to them? You know, I would just let them know that, number one, the way they feel is completely understandable. I don't think that we can tell someone how to feel when they've been through something like that. And I completely understand. Like, they've lost a loved one. I took that person from them. And, you know, of course, I would tell them that I apologize. If they would ever want an opportunity to speak with me, I'd be more than happy to you talk to them. them. I would. You know, Centoya talks with a peace that only God can give you. Like just for everything that she's been through in her life from a young age up until now, that young lady speaks with a peace that only God can give you. I need to get some of that peace because Lord knows I'll be ready to pop off at any moment. But, you know, it was just so nice having the opportunity to actually hear her speak um, and share her thoughts and share her words. And she began the interview by saying, I am only here by the grace of God. So if you have not seen that interview, you can watch it in its entirety at icecreamconvos.com. 
And um, just search Centoya Brown, but it might be at the very top of the page because it wasn't that long ago that I posted it, but just good for her. And I am giving away a copy of the book. Um, it's a Patreon only giveaway. So if you are ICC Patreon, then you can go ahead and enter to win a copy of Centoya's book. All right. So let's slide into some baby news. No, I ain't pregnant. I ain't the one. My club, Club Uterus, is closed for me, boo-boo. Ain't no more parties, ain't no more events in Club Uterus for me. I'm done. But Amber Rose did welcome her second son, and she named the baby Slash Electric. I said, okay. All right. That's okay, because nine times out of ten, he probably won't have to work nowhere. So she named the baby Slash Electric because apparently the baby's father, A.E., is a huge fan of Slash from Guns N' Roses. Um, electric, it's electric, boogie, boogie, boogie. I'm, I'm just guessing. I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he's a precious little man. They haven't quite showed his face or his pictures yet on social media, but I am sure I am most positive that Bash is probably somewhere being the best big brother on the planet. That is the sweetest baby boy. You just, uh. He is just everything. So congratulations to Amber Rose, A.E., Bash, and Slash. Um, so, yeah. Boogie, woogie, woogie. So anyway, Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav. Child, y'all, Flavor Flav done got hit with a paternity suit. This 60-something-year-old rapper is being accused of fathering some woman's two-month-old son. Kate Gamble who used to work as part of Flavor Flav's management team, has filed a paternity suit against the iconic public enemy hype man, claiming that he fathered her two-month-old son and then ghosted the hell out of her. He no longer accepts her phone calls, nor does he speak to her. Flavor Flav is saying, The kid is not my son. Yeah, boy! First things first. Who in the year of our Lord 2019 is having sexual relations with one Flavor Flav? Number two, how old is this woman? Because she may need to go get checked for the worms. My grandma told me when a young woman sleeps with an older man, she gonna get the worms. So this young lady may want to go get checked for the worms. But the baby is a handsome, sweet little baby. I posted a picture of him on the site because she is showing him off all over social media. So um, yeah, Flavor Flav may be up to his... I think it's eight. Yeah, so this baby will be Flavor Flav's eighth child if the paternity test comes back and says that he is the pappy. So um, yeah, congratulations to Flav. I would think after six decades on God's green earth, you would think to use a condom. And but um, yeah, keep on passing out them worms, Flav. And uh, so now this Kate woman is seeking uh child support and uh, insurance and all that other good stuff that comes along with having a child and making the daddy step up to his responsibilities. So with that being said, yikes. That's just yikes. Speaking of yikes, Kiki Wyatt is pregnant with her 10th child. Um, the R&B songstress took to social media to happily announce that she is with child again and their 10th edition is on the way. So y'all, it's funny because some of my ICC friends was like, hold on, I thought her and her husband split up. Y'all got to catch up now. Kiki done got remarried again. She done got remarried again and got a new baby on the way with her new husband. Kiki wrote on social media, my husband, Zachariah Daring, and I are so happy to announce that we are expecting our new bundle of joy. We're excited to welcome the 10th edition to our beautiful family. Stay tuned for the release date and information for my new YouTube series, The Kiki Show, where you will see me balancing wife, mommy, and artist. Trust me, it's never a dull moment with my family. I guess not. Kiki is the new Dugers. Is it Duggars or Dugars? I don't know. Either way, whole bunch of babies. But um, anyone remember many, many moons ago on R&B Divas when Kiki was telling Michael Jamal, is it Michael Jamal or Michael Jamar, whatever his name was, her last husband, how she just loves having babies and how babies are just so awesome and they're so sweet and they just love her so much. I believe Kiki Wyatt is addicted to having babies. 
Now, I'm not here to judge. You know, if that's what she likes to do, I'm pretty sure she can afford to take care of all those youngins. And if um, that's what she can afford to do, and if her body can do it, because mine can't, if her body can do it, more power to her. You know, my great grandma had 12 kids, but it was a different era. It was a different era. My grandma was having them youngins back in 1929, not 2019. It's a different time. It's a different era. But with that being said, my only concern, and it's just a concern, not a judgment. My only concern for myself with having 10 children would be making sure that each of those 10 children get the love, the nurturing, the time, the dedication that they need from me as a mom. Right now, my oldest youngin is 27, my middle youngin is 25, and my baby is 11. I'm already spreading myself thin between two grown folks and a young girl. So let alone 10 youngins who are almost kind of, sort of, in a mm, kind of way, stair steps, I I would be on some very strong liquor. Yeah, because I don't do drugs, but I would be drunk, really nice and drunk. And I don't want to be a drunk mom, so I know my limitations. So, And then I just thought about it. I was like, you know, she has a very busy career. She tours a lot. She performs a lot. But if she can balance it, I'm all about go for it, girl. Just the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. And you was like, I'm going to multiply this thing, divide it, square root it, and add more to it. So, you know, just congratulations to Kiki and her new husband. He is super duper happy. This is his first child. But um, he better realize he's going to be a dad of nine. He already a dad of nine. This might be his first child, but he already a daddy of nine. So just congratulations to them. All right. So that's it for our baby news because my uterus is itching. Um, let's get into some movie news. So since the last time we talked on this podcast, they have announced that a training day prequel is in the works at Warner Brothers. So uh, when I say prequel, some of y'all kind of missed that word and y'all were like, hold on, how sway, just how? Because uh, they killed Denzel at the end of training day. So how they gonna do a sequel? Boo, I said prequel, pre meaning before. So the film is going to be before training day and it's so funny because i write these posts and i give information but some of y'all just either don't comprehend it or y'all just refuse to read it and it really makes me wonder why i was giving you the information in the first got doggone place but yes so it's going to be a training day prequel which will take place in april of 1992 i think two months it's either two weeks or two months. I think it's two months. Two months before the Rodney King verdict was released. So they've already set the stage for the tomfoolery and the foolishness to go down. And it is it will follow Denzel's character, a younger version of Denzel's character, Alonzo. And I guess it'll kind of tell us how he ended up becoming this dirty, fine ass King Kong ain't got nothing on me ass Academy Award winning cop in this film. So... I'm here for it. I would really love for them to tap Denzel's son to play a younger version of him. And I know it might be a reach because John David really looks like his mama more than Denzel, but he sounds like Denzel. He has his daddy's mannerisms down to a science. So if they could finesse that and make that work, I would be totally here for that. Two snaps and a Z. Wait, three? Y'all know I can't snap my fingers that good. But I was trying to give you a three snap and a Z formation. Okay. Yeah, I took it back. Whatever. All right, so I'm going to take a moment to provide some clarity for y'all on this Doolittle movie starring Robert Downey Jr. Now, full disclosure, when I first saw the trailer for Doolittle, I said, hold on, hold on, they done, they done gentrified Dr. Doolittle. Hold up. First the fat boys break up, first Richard Pryor get burned up, and now y'all done gentrified Dr. Doolittle. And then I thought to myself, Zavi, does that make logical sense to you and I said well n no it don't so let me just do some research before I jump out the window and say something stupid and that's what I did so upon my research I learned that Dr. Doolittle the original Dr. Doolittle was released in 1967 and it starred the white actor Rex Harrison 
Okay. Because some of y'all was in the comments like, oh, no. Oh, so now they just going to replace Eddie Murphy with a white actor. Oh, I see what y'all doing. See, I'm so this why I'm sick and tired of Hollywood. Y'all had clapping emojis and the thing and everything. So I needed to do my researches. And upon my researches, my researches told me that no, they did not replace Eddie Murphy. They are just going back to the back back to the back, back, back original Dr. Doolittle. And that is who Robert Downey Jr. is portraying. No one is trying to whitewash Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doolittle. Nobody is trying to replace a black actor with a white actor or gentrify Dr. Doolittle. Okay, I'm trying. Just listen to me when I tell y'all this. Sometimes you just got to do one little Googles and it'll straighten up everything for you. So that is what's going on. Basically, there was an original Dr. Doolittle. 1967. Eddie Murphy had his own vision and own version of Dr. Doolittle and he released several films which we absolutely love. He killed it. Kyla Pratt, Eddie Murphy, we loved it, right? Cool. So then we have that but now they are going back to the original story of Dr. Doolittle. So please don't be out in front of the theater talking about no Roger or no rerun, no rant. No Roger, no rerun, no rant. Trying to protest the new Dr. Doolittle because y'all think they trying to push Eddie Murphy's version out of the history books. No, they're going back to the original, to the backpack. Okay, so now that we have that clear, let's move on to Zoe Kravitz. Congratulations to Zoe. Sis is going to be the new Catwoman in the new Batman movie. And it's funny because one of my ICC friends was like, um, besides being beautiful, why does she get this role? Like, what does she really be acting in? I was like, oh. You fronting on Zoe Kravitz acting? Do you not watch Big Little Lies? Like what? What's so I just were like, are you joking? But turns out she was, you know, this particular ICC friend was rooting for Logan Browning to get the role. So she's feeling a little salty, thus the shade towards, you know, Zoe. But Zoe is deserving. I think she is sexy enough to pull off Catwoman and give the vibes. So I'm here for it. So congratulations to Zoe. TV Scoop, already told you about One Chicago. And I am pleasantly, pleasantly enjoying Netflix's Rhythm and Flow with Cardi B and Chance the Rapper and T.I. where it's like this hip-hop competition where they're going from city to city to find the next big hip-hop star. Now, while I am thoroughly enjoying the show, the Chicago episode had me doing the ugly cry. So if you have not watched yet, when Chance goes to Chicago to pull his folks, grab your Kleenex early. Don't get caught slipping like I did because I literally had to take a minute to get myself together because it's just so much soul and just heart in Chicago, man. It's it's undeniable in Chicago. But wonderful show. I really, truly, honestly enjoy it. But I have to push past Listening to Cardi B tell people that they aren't good enough for this particular competition or that they don't have what it takes to be a star. And I'm this is not a knock to Cardi. It's just my personal struggle that I'm sharing with you all. I struggle with Cardi B telling someone else. That's like Lala t- sitting in on an audition. God, see, here I go. Sorry, y'all. I said I was going to let Lala be great, but I need an example. It's like Lala sitting in on an audition for a movie telling someone, "Mm, you're good, but you just don't quite have it. I suggest you continue your acting classes and and try to audition at a later time. I'm just saying, I love Cardi B. I enjoy her music. I think she might need to take a break from social media sometimes, but I just feel uncomfortable with her telling someone else whether or not they have star power. It's just weird. But I enjoy her none the same because she is so funny. She is so funny, so funny. And the show is just, it's just cool. And and when you watch shows like this, I always watch them with like a bleeding heart, so to speak. Because when you watch a group of people who are fighting to see their dream realized, but you know only one person can walk away with the grand prize, it just hurts. It just makes me sad because I know how how it feels. You know, I've tried out for little competitions and stuff before in the past, but we ain't going to talk about it. 
But here I am. So you can see how that turned out for me. But it just, I just have a bleeding heart for these people because just imagine wanting something so bad. Some people were literally begging for the opportunity, but it is a great show. So definitely check it out on Netflix. New episodes air every Wednesday. It's like a three week situation. First week is four episodes and the last two weeks are three episodes a piece. So check that out if you haven't done so yet. Um, Godfather of Harlem. Forrest Whitaker as Bumpy Johnson. The show is straight fire. Now, yes, I had to come up off a five spot every month to watch, you know, because it is a subscription service, but it is worth the $5.99. It is worth the $5.99. Such a great series. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts. But yes, 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 Mr. Forrest Whitaker, you are doing all of that. All right, Um, right, let's see what else I got. Okay, so... Um, DMX, where my dog's at. My dog is currently in rehab, but I am so thrilled to announce that DMX went to rehab prior to relapsing, not after a relapse. My boy was being proactive instead of reactive. Apparently he was going through a lot of stressful things. He has a little one who is not healthy and he just had the stress of his personal life and his business life coming down on him and he checked into rehab before he relapsed because it is very important for him to stay clean because he's on probation and if he slips up and they he got some dirty piss he's out back in a slammer we do not want that so just shout out to his support team. Shout out to whomever that was around him who helped him make this decision or who tapped him on his shoulder and was like, Earl, you looking kind of shaky, bro. What's good? You all right? You good? You all right? You all right because you good or you good because you all right? And just shout out to him for going in, whether he went under protest or whether he went willingly. Just shout out to him for going back into rehab, getting the help that he needs it's, I'm just so proud of him. I'm just so proud of him. When I first heard he was back in rehab, my heart was hurting because I was like, dang, I was rooting for him. And I just hate to hear that he relapsed. But now that I know that was not the case, that was not the case. He was being proactive. That just makes me even more excited for him because now he's being proactive and he has definitely taken his sobriety into his own hands. So yes, DMX. Yes, Earl Simmons. Yes, yes, yes. Get the help that you need. Meanwhile, we'll be out here praying for you and sending you all the illest positive vibes that you need in order to get on track and stay on track. Last but certainly not least, as far as um, celebrity news is concerned, Nipsey's Hustle's family was granted guardianship of his 10-year-old daughter, Imani. Not his baby mama, Tanisha Foster. So I know this is probably a blow to Tanisha. But at the same time, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about Imani's well-being and where she's going to flourish the most and receive everything that she needs. And apparently the judge believed Nipsey's family when they said that, you know, Tanisha was unfit. And I guess he saw enough or knew enough to make this decision. So hopefully, you know, they still allow her to be very present in Imani's life and won't strip Imani from her mother um, on a total basis, you know. So um, yeah, and Tanisha is still posting on social media how much she misses Nipsey and pictures of them hugged up. You know, you could tell there are pictures that she dug out the crate but nonetheless, um, you know, I expect it. I mean, they had a relationship. They have a daughter. Every time she looks at her daughter, she sees Nipsey. So I can't fault her for being like, oh my gosh, I miss him or whatever. But, you know, it's it's just weird because sometimes you question her motives when she puts things on social media. But it's not my business. I'm just here to tell y'all about it. And um, so with that being said, just prayers and love to Nipsey's family as they continue to try to put the pieces back together again um, after such a major and heartbreaking loss. OK, so um, let's end the show by getting into two news stories that um, had just got my soul weary. So first things first, Junior, you guys remember Junior. Um, the young man from New York who was brutally and savagely murdered with um, a machete. I believe it was a machete outside of a local bodega. The five gang members who are responsible for killing Junior have been sentenced to life sentences in jail. So um, they deserve it. 
Too bad they can't get two life sentences or three because what they did to that young man is inconceivable and it's unforgivable. Well, I know God said we're supposed to forgive, but I'm just saying. I'm just just saying. Um, So with that being said, it's good to know that Junior finally got justice. And, um, you know, one of the guys who was convicted for killing Junior, his mom flipped all the way out in court and said that her son was innocent. Ma'am, there was surveillance video it was a lot of things that came into play in this case and um, just horrible, absolutely horrible. Now, back to Texas. Now, Texas, I'm going to need y'all to go sit down somewhere. Like, Texas, go sit down. Listen, you can go sit below New Mexico or you can go sit in the Gulf. Just go sit down somewhere. Fort Worth, Texas. A Tatiana Jefferson. 28-year-old Tatiana Jefferson in her home, minding her own damn business, playing video games with her eight-year-old nephew. Now, apparently on Saturday morning around two o'clock in the morning, Tatiana's neighbor, James Smith, he was alerted by his daughter that Tatiana's front door was wide open and that the lights were on two o'clock in the morning. And he became concerned. He did go over to the home, but apparently he went over. Maybe something spooked him or he was like, "Mm, maybe I just ain't this courageous. Let me go on back home, call the non-emergency police line and ask for an officer to come out and just conduct a wellness check to make sure my neighbors are all right. And that's what he did. Well, when Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean arrived at the scene, He came out there on some Call of Duty shit and went all around the house with his gun drawn and his flashlight looking around, looking around. A Tatiana hears a noise in the backyard, goes to the window to see what it is. Aaron Dean yells out, put your hands up and fires a shot through the window, killing a Tatiana in her own home. Now, here's the thing. Officer Aaron Dean never announced himself as a police officer. Officer Aaron Dean did not give a Tatiana a breath worth of a second to say, sir, this is my house. Sir, what is going on? Why do you have a gun pointed at me? He did not give her an opportunity to say or do anything. He pulled his gun and he killed that girl inside her home. Again, in Texas, another African-American human being being gunned down in their own damn home. This killing comes less than two weeks after Amber Geiger was given a measly 10 year sentence, a hug and a Bible in court for walking into Botham John's home and killing him because she was she mistook the apartment for her own. Here we are again. 28 year old Tatiana Jefferson gone. A, her eight-year-old nephew traumatized watching his aunt get gunned down for no reason whatsoever. Aaron Dean was arrested and charged with murder, but guess what? He was allowed to post $200,000 bond. He is back out on the street. What the hell? The mayor issued an apology. The mayor issued an apology. People are like, there is no possible way for anyone to talk their way out of this one but guess what stranger things have happened and I think it is very very piss poor egregious and shameful for the Dallas Police Department or whoever was responsible for releasing that dash cam video and adding a little excerpt at the end that said a Tatiana had a gun inside the house so the hell what she had a gun in the house but apparently she didn't get to it quick enough So the hell what? You are allowed to have a weapon in your home, right? In Texas. And then I understand that, right? Ain't that what y'all was saying? So why the need to drop that little tidbit in? You know why? Because we know the routine. They kill us and then they vilify us. And then they try to make it out. Well, you know, it was a life, but it wasn't really a valuable life because, you know, she did smoke pot in third grade and she did get suspended from school in kindergarten because she ate a crayon. They try to make people out to be not worth the life that you snatch from them but we're not gonna do this with a tatiana jefferson y'all couldn't even do it with botham y'all try oh well he smoked weed oh okay so what but the man did mission trips he was a scholar like y'all just can't minim- minimize people just because it fits your narrative or it makes it a little less painful 
No. Y'all took this girl for no damn reason. Before you couldn't drive while black. Then you couldn't go to the store while black. And then you couldn't this. Now you can't even be at home and live in your own house. And I feel so bad. There are a large group of people who are blaming the neighbor, Mr. James Smith. They are blaming the neighbor for calling the police because they said, had he not ever called the police, they never would have came out to the home and ultimately fatally shot a Tatiana Jefferson. But at the same time, it's not his fault because I struggled with this too, because I was like, why didn't, why did like, why did he call? That was my first thought. And I'm not going to lie to kick it. My first thought was, why did he call the police? Oh, come on y'all. But I know that there are certain things that I know, or I feel like I'm not capable of handling. If I think someone is if something is wrong inside a home where I think there's, possi- there's possibly an intruder, I don't feel equipped enough to roll up in there and try to resolve the situation. But it's like now we can't we can't even call the police. We can't even call the police. And I I hate to even imagine the guilt that Mr. James Smith feels. He was trying to help and it turned out like this. Just unimaginable but in 2019 it's becoming it's becoming a norm i mean god dog we didn't even find out who killed the the young man who testified in the amber geiger trial we well they say it was a drug deal going wrong they say but i i don't even i don't even believe that I, I don't believe that. It's too easy of a narrative. Yeah, okay. Three guys drive from a whole nother state to buy weed? Huh? Y'all had no plugs locally? D- what? I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's, and none of it makes sense. Just none of it makes sense. So I will be following this story closely. I will be updating the site as updates become available. Pray for the family of a Tatiana Jefferson. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. And um, it's, it's terrible that these stories are becoming more and more frequent to the point of it. I don't know. I just can't wrap my mind around it. I really can't. So with that being said, um, I'm probably going to go somewhere, have a good cry. Got a screening tonight. And um, thank you all just for tuning into the ICC podcast. And um, thank you for supporting Ice Cream Combos. Thank you for, you know, listening to the podcast, for reading the site, for sharing the stories, for commenting on social media, following on social media. I sincerely and truly enjoy each and every one of you, even the ones that I block. I enjoyed you for a little bit, but our time had to come to an end. So um, with that being said, I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to tune into the next episode of the Ice Cream Convos podcast. But in the meanwhile, I'll see you in the streets of the internet and at icecreamconvos.com. Have a great day. Bye. Ice Cream Conversations. Ice Cream Conversations. Forever on the grind all day, every day.